the great man-made river, Libya's quest for water. In 1956, Libya's oil companies were looking for more oil in the southern desert, hoping to strike it rich, but they found something even better than oil, water. A huge amount of water hidden under the ground for thousands of years. This water was not just any water, it was fossil water, which means it was ancient water that had been trapped in the rock since before the end of the last ice age. It came from the rain that fell in the Sahara when the climate was much wetter and cooler than today. This rainwater seeped into the sandstone and formed a giant underground reservoir called the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System. This aquifer system is the largest in the world and it covers four countries, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, and Chad. Now, you might wonder why water is such a big deal for Libya. Well, it's because water is the most important thing for life and Libya doesn't have much of it. Libya is one of the driest and most water-poor countries in the world with no rivers and hardly any rain. Most of the country's just sand and rocks where it gets super hot and dry. So when they found water in 1956, they were ecstatic. They discovered a treasure that could change their country forever. A treasure that could make the desert green and fertile, but there was a catch. The water was in the middle of nowhere, far away from the people and the cities. And the question was, how could they get the water from the south to the north over a long and difficult journey of 1,000 kilometers and over a land of harsh and unfriendly desert? The answer came from the vision of one man, Muammar Gaddafi. Now, you may have heard of a man named Muammar Gaddafi who used to lead Libya until 2011 when rebel forces ended his rule. Gaddafi had quite a few accomplishments under his belt, like supporting African unity, helping South Africa gain freedom, championing human rights, and being known for his generosity and charisma. However, what's not widely known is that Gaddafi had a grand plan, something he called the Great Man-Made River Project. This project aimed to bring water from the desert to the coast, essentially turning Libya into a lush and prosperous land. In his own words, he called it the eighth wonder of the world. Now, before Gaddafi's time, Libya had a different story. It gained independence from Italy in 1951 and set up a constitutional monarchy with King Idris at the helm. The discovery of oil in 1959 turned Libya into one of Africa and the Middle East's wealthiest and most influential nations. Now, Gaddafi's vision for the great man-made river was not just about technology and economics. It was also deeply political and ideological. He saw it as a symbol of Libya's strength and unity, something to be proud of. It was a way to assert Libya's sovereignty and independence while challenging the influence of Western powers. He believed it would help Libya fulfill its potential and inspire African and Arab nations. Ultimately, he wanted it to be an historic legacy, serving the Libyan people in the best possible way. Gaddafi had a big dream and he had a clear plan to make it a reality. He had the money, motivation, trust of the Libyan people, skills, and technology. He also had the world's support. In 1984, he began the Great Man-Made River Project, aiming to complete it in 20 years. He divided it into five parts, each with specific goals and challenges. He employed thousands of workers and engineers, both Libyan and foreign, and used billions of dollars from Libya's oil revenue to fund it. Gaddafi closely oversaw every aspect, turning it into a national priority. The first phase involved building a pipeline from the south to the north, using water from the Nubian sandstone aquifer to supply cities like Benghazi and Sirte. This part required a quarter million concrete pipes, each 7.5 meters long, 4 meters wide, and weighing 72 tons. The pipes were manufactured in two factories, transported and installed in the desert. This part also featured numerous wells, pumps, valves, tanks, and a sophisticated monitoring system. It took 12 years and was operational by 1996, providing 2 million cubic meters of water daily, enough for 2 million people and 100,000 hectares of land. The second phase extended the pipeline to the west, reaching Tripoli and surrounding areas using water from the Murzuk Basin. It was completed in 2000, delivering an additional 1.2 million cubic meters of water each day, sufficient for 1.2 million people and 70,000 hectares of land. The third phase expanded the network further to supply more water to Benghazi and Sirte, utilizing water from the Kufra Basin. This phase was finished in 2009, providing an extra 1.7 million cubic meters of water daily 
enough for 1.7 million people and 130,000 hectares of land. The fourth and fifth phases aim to connect the western and eastern systems to Tobruk and the Jagbub oasis, ultimately delivering 6.5 million cubic meters of water daily for 6.5 million people and 350,000 hectares of land. Unfortunately, these phases were never completed due to political turmoil and civil war following the Arab Spring Revolution and Gaddafi's downfall in 2011. The Great Man-Made River was a massive engineering project. This project was also super expensive, costing over $25 billion, and it made Libya's leader, Muammar Gaddafi, really proud. He even called it the eighth wonder of the world. However, this project had its share of problems. It faced technical and operational challenges that made it less efficient and reliable. Rust, leaks, and maintenance issues popped up due to the tough desert conditions and high water pressure. To keep the water safe and clean, they had to constantly check and test it. Politics and security were also big hurdles. Groups that didn't like Gaddafi tried to harm the project by damaging it or attacking the people working on it. Plus, it caused arguments within Libya's neighbors, who worried Libya was using up too much of the shared aquifer water. Things got worse in 2011 when a civil war started in Libya. This war wasn't just a local conflict. Foreign countries like NATO joined in and bombed Gaddafi's government. That hurt the project a lot. The fighting broke or destroyed many pipes, wells, and tanks, messing up the water supply. One of the worst attacks was on July 22, 2011, when NATO planes bombed a pipe factory in Brega, killing six guards and injuring several workers. The factory was one of the main places where the pipes for the project were made, and the bombing damaged or destroyed hundreds of pipes. NATO said they bombed the factory because it was being used to make weapons. NATO also said they hit the project on purpose, saying it had military uses. The people running the project also had a hard time with all the chaos and confusion. The war ended in 2011 when Gaddafi's regime fell, but the project's troubles didn't stop. Libya stayed messed up, with different groups fighting for control. The project's infrastructure kept getting worse because nobody was taking care of it. By July 2019, more than 100 wells on the Western Pipeline were taken apart. On April 10, 2020, some unknown armed group took over a station that controlled the water flow to Tripoli and nearby towns. That meant over 2 million people suddenly had no water. The United Nations got mad about it, saying it was a human rights issue. Now the project's future isn't clear. Libya is still trying to find peace and stability. People argue about whether the project was a smart idea or not. Some think it was a great thing that helped a lot of Libyans, while others say it caused more trouble than it fixed. For Libya, the project is both good and bad at the same time. The Great Man-Made River is a remarkable tale of human determination and sometimes human mistakes. This project embodies Libya's dreams, but also its struggles. It's left a mark on the country, but Libya has also left its mark on this project. This isn't just any project, it's a story. A story that's still unfolding with an uncertain ending. The Great Man-Made River is more than a project, it's Libya's story. So what do you think of the Great Man-Made River? Do you think it's a wonder or a blunder? Or do you think it's part of a story that's still unfolding and evolving? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more documentaries like this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.